So here we are uh, in the Strawbell Studio land. You can see the Strawbell Studio out in the background. And um, beautiful spot here. And we're going to take a walk back and see the rocket stove, which is out by the red shed. Okay, we're going to do a mock-up. Um, this is a way that you can experiment and, and what you build you can actually cook on outdoors casually or it can be the beginning of a stove that you use inside. So the mock-up is to get the relationships correct, learn more about putting this together. And ordinarily um, you put a sand base down on the ground, level things out at least. And uh, in the real situation there would be bricks underneath all of this so the ground would be a bricked area. And now these are the first layer of bricks that are starting to go up and we're starting to create now the burn chamber with this, uh, these bricks. And this will be the feed tube and this will be the heat riser coming up here. But I'm looking for here um, flat and level so having your level nearby, kind of check things out, make corrections if you need to. And we're looking for, this is going to be a, a seven inch system. So this system is going to get measured up at seven by seven and you can have uh, a tape measure or maybe a, a, a stick that you have cut to the seven by seven. And so you're keeping that in mind all the way along. We don't want any area uh, to be smaller than the burn tunnel here. So we don't want constrictions later on in our system that could slow it up. Now we're putting up the second layer. The second layer uh, level is usually recommended to be a vertical <clears throat> and from there on in vertical. In the rocket stove book the suggestion is the first layer is flat and then from there on we can build vertically. And we're getting edges flush and flat because we want to have a nice smooth flow for the air so nothing gets caught up on anything. And we'll continue like this around the structure. That's a good point. Clean up your bricks. Get mortar off so they can sit well together. Ideally, we would also get overlapping the joints so things aren't lined up. I put the, the second row on. Now we're starting to work vertically. And I'm looking for my seven inches vertically now. Seven inches this direction and seven inches this direction. So we're starting to create the feed tube right now and John will bring over these other two bricks. Thank you. Um, and notice how these are kind of in a pattern like this. Uh, so that we get overlapping. It's sort of like when you put box flaps down, you know, you do one after the other. And we're starting to put now some heavier bricks. We want our strongest bricks to be above this uh, burn tunnel because this gets very hot in here, supposedly up to 1,000 degrees or so. Starting to carefully place the chimney going upward and I'm looking to see that it's a smooth surface, well placed. And notice how it's overlapping like a box. And in order to do that, for instance, this doesn't fit, but if I slide this this way and bring this in, then we can get our seven inches in there. And um, right now, I could put this brick on top of this brick, but that would leave two cracks in a row. So we want to overlap it. And this is typical in brick laying. It's called two to one. Um, and so here again, I'm going to cover the crack, and that will make a stronger uh, structure. Now eventually, this area is going to be insulated. And we'll be showing you some examples of that insulation around this chimney. There you go. All right. 
And we're also using a local material, our local subsoil, that's made up of clay and sand. And this is just how it comes out of our ground. It's perfect. And um, we can cover the, the whole stove eventually with this, or parts of the stove. But right now we're using this mix to fill up any cracks that would uh, get in the way of our test burn being efficient. So I, I'm just going to look around and find some spots. It's actually, a, they're fit together quite well. This is just temporary. These are a uh, fire brick and there's the lightweight fire brick that are, that's a high, high insulation quality. And they're so, um, they're so soft. Here's one right here. They're so soft that, you know, you can break them down easily. So these are um, kiln brick. And then this is a, a very dense, heavy uh, kiln brick, many times heavier than this. And um, it could be, it's good for places where you want something really strong, like over the burn tunnel. That's, that would be a good place for these heavy duty bricks. So in terms of brick quality, uh, we're looking for something that is not going to blow up under high temperature. So. Um, the old bricks were lower fired and they were more um, porous and soft. So um, those old red brick, common red brick we call them. So those are good, those are fine. Uh, and they will uh, absorb the heat and the expansion. I have some bricks around here that I'm not using because they are more modern and they're brittle and they have two holes in them and they're kind of really strong and sharp edged. And maybe that sounds familiar to you. And those aren't ideal, uh, one, because they've got the holes, although you could probably uh, plug them up with earth and mix. But they're, they're just brittle, and they might not take the shock of the heating and cooling. We're seeing a, a quite a clean burn. I just added some new wood in, but we were, this was clear a bit ago, and I, it's coming clear again, but it's very hot. We're getting up to our good, efficient levels. There you go. There you can see the... See what you can't see, the clear, clearness of it. This it allows it to, to shoot up. It has a heavier draw and it can shoot up like a rocket. Wow, you can, you can see the heat coming out of it though. The chimney, we're getting more combustion. Thanks for coming. I'm glad that you could share in this information. And uh, you can find us online at www.strawbalestudio.org. And uh, come and join us sometime.